ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Made in Japan. Today we're actually checking out Dragon Quest Heroes 2. Undertitled, uh, what was it called? Twin Kings and the Ending of Prophecy. Now, Dragon Quest is a long, long running RPG series. You might have seen a couple of videos about Dragon Quest here on Pastiche of Skin. We've spoken before about the, uh, the Dragon Quest Builders game, which has recently gotten a European or an English demo. Now, Dragon Quest Heroes is another kind of sideline series to the original games where it's made by Omega Force, the guys who do the Dynasty Warrior games. Now, that just means we've got a hack and slash to look forward to, but a hack and slash with heavy RPG elements set within the Dragon Quest world, which, I, stylistically, the look always reminds me, it's a, it's a Kira Toriyama, it's um, the Dragon Ball series kind of uh, looking characters, so powering up and leveling up as you go through it kind of fits in aesthetically to me, just even by visually looking at it. Now, the hack and slash is going to be obviously a little bit different with the kind of the cutesiness of the characters of the Dragon Quest series, but there's still that same comfortable depth that actually everybody kind of found between Hyrule Warriors, uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam, and the original Dynasty Warriors series. Now, obviously I'm playing through this with uh, blindness uh, because I've played a bit of the Dragon Quest games. I think probably on the PlayStation 2 would have been the last Dragon Quest game I actually really played. So I know what the world is about, essentially an invasion of dragons and monsters and you're pretty much going to have to fight back and prepare and save the world because you are the hero, whether you're a guy or a girl or whatever one you chose at the beginning of the game. Now, story elements in the Dynasty Warrior games, I've never really known them to be deep in any way, shape, or form. Uh, well, obviously, there's a deep, meaningful story going on, but like the Aslan game and the Hyrule Warriors game, they, this one has a nice level of involved plot, actual like characters and cutscenes and moments in between and character shares it, it's I, I i i can't really dislike it in any way shape or form I, I, because i do love the formula of a dynasty warriors game so uh, seeing more of these kind of like involved story element versions I, I i'm 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 on board i like i i could throw myself into this quite comfortably um because uh, this is what we made out of scrolling beat em ups. The original scrolling beat em ups of Streets of Rage or Final Fight. That's this is what they've become. This, are these hack and slashes have really kind of filled in that gap that we lost whenever we went from the two to three dimensional kind of plane. I mean, if I think back far enough, one of the first games I even really enjoyed on the 360 would have been probably 99 Nights, and it obviously kind of cloned the Dynasty Warriors style. I, I, I can't really think of words to articulate what I like about Hurricane Slash, but there is something that just kind of like twitches in your brain about swathing through large amounts of enemies. It's the same reason why I find action RPGs quite entertaining as well. That you just kind of you make your run, you hammer through them, and you can repeat the same thing again, but just at a better speed. It's it's that almost like trying to get your personal best lap score, plus with the possibility of loot drops, plus with the opportunity to level up your character. It's maybe something that's part of the grind mechanic of old RPGs that just goes very well for hack and slash. And I'm thinking that this is actually probably a rising style that we're going to see more. We're going to see a lot more action based RPGs because of their involvement now rather than actually the classic turn base. So. As a development for the Dragon Quest series, this could get me more into them if I saw more games like this. While I'm sure for others it might be something of a turn off because it's taken away from the original style of the game. So the game came out in May 27th of 2016 with a release date in August on Southeast Asian countries. There hasn't been a release date for North America or Europe yet. But I don't see there being a reason why the game won't make it over to our shores, considering the reasonably good seal figures for the first game in the series. Now, this is a game that's actually released for the 30th anniversary of Dragon Quest. It's hard to believe that it's actually... It's a very popular series that a lot of us know, but wouldn't be as mainstream, say, as the Final Fantasy series. So, it's glad to see uh, someone that's physically shifted in its style that might bring it out to a completely different audience. Now, if you wanted to play this demo, you can get it down from the Japanese or Hong Kong PSN stores, which will give you an opportunity to figure out whether or not you like the game's style, the hack and slash nature, and the progression, which uh, 
could maybe consider you or influence you into purchasing the first in the series. You don't have to play these in comparison to each other. There are separate games with uh, heroes from uh, multiple games in the Dragon Quest series that all kind of come together for the combat in this. The game does have multiplayer support for up to four players online, although it doesn't directly support chat functions, which you can, if you were playing, you can easily find your uh, companion's name on the PSN network and create a group chat or a party chat to do so. But you can use uh, typical stock phrases within the game to be able to communicate with each other, whether or not you have to go left, go right, come here, that kind of thing. It's, um... Dynasty Warrior games with online multiplayer intrigue me. It's still the fact that I, I'm so heavily entrenched in playing the Dynasty Warriors Gundam series that I want one of those. I want a DW Gundam series or a DW Gundam game where I can play multiplayer where we can just rampage across a space map and destroy so many mobile suits. But um, until then, this does kind of fill in that little bit of a gap where I could actually be able to hack and slash with a group. The good old days of couch co-op for this sadly are gone, or this style of game, but honestly online, I could see the destruction being really, really enjoyable. Being able to explore in a manner similar to traditional RPG games on a larger world map is something that's been added to the Dragon Quest Heroes 2 game, which was lacking and kind of marked the first one as being almost much more of a Dynasty Warriors clone, where you just set missions and you work your way from it. With the larger world map, as you travel from place to place, you will run into random encounters, which will help level up and control your characters. But speaking of the characters themselves and main antagonists, you actually don't have like a set class or skill set anymore. You can do a switch which runs you from um, different types of combat, um, allowing you to choose a completely different set of skills or use a different set of skills whenever you're fighting. The classes they include are actually like martial artist, mage, monk, thief and warrior. Being able to switch between these at will, mattering on the weapons that you purchase from a merchant in the game and whatever you feel like particularly using that day, or the enemies that you're fighting in combat, is a bit of an improvement from uh, being able just to create your character having a set one that you have to play through throughout the game. Imagine that each of these skills and types will independently level from your character and classes so that you can unlock and appreciate more skills as you move along. I look forward to seeing a English language release of this game because as much as I didn't, I, I played through a little bit of the original Dragon Quest Heroes, I'd rather play this one a lot more. It seems to actually be much more involved. So. With all the additions and changes to the game type, I'm looking forward to getting my fingers into this and enjoying a good bit of solid hack and slash with a reasonably deep story element to it. If you don't like this particular game or you don't like Dragon Quest, I can highly recommend checking out either Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U or checking out Aslan Warriors of Virtue on some one of the other platforms. I'm pretty sure it's on Xbox One. 360 and PS3 and PS4, so there's plenty of options to give a try of that. It has a very solid and molded storyline, and it's in vain similar to this, but is based on a much more um, semi-historical fantasy warrior epic, rather than this being a whimsical kind of monster slashing quest game. So guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been Dragon Quest Heroes 2 on Past Teacher Skin. It's been an absolute pleasure showing you some of this stuff and talking about the game. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.